Hi guys, this is Duncan from dunksblog.com and today I'm talking about the folder hierarchy on a Linux system. Just comparing that to a Windows system, you'll see under the C drive, program files, temp, users and Windows. It's fairly easy to understand what they do. When you switch over to Linux, you'll find that it's a lot more involved, there's a lot more folders and what do these all do? Well let's get started. The first one is bin, also known as binaries and this contains all the commands that you'll probably do on a day to day basis. So we've got chmod, we've got cp or copy, mv, move, uh, gunzip, gzip, all that sort of stuff is done inside of bin. Boot is all the files that are required to boot the system successfully. So we have like a backup of the master boot record, we have memory testing, grub, so we've got the bootloader, all that sort of stuff is inside boot. The next one is dev. Now dev is a virtual folder. Uh, it's a little bit different than the other folders which are physically there. This one is more of a way to display what is happening on the system and in this instance it's devices. So similar to how device manager works on Windows, uh, this is showing you in the form of folders and files that you can manipulate um, but it doesn't technically exist as actual files because these are removed and added when devices are found. So this is all the stuff that is probed and found when the system was booted. So you can go ahead and check all the information on those. Next one is etc. This contains all the configuration files for the Linux operating system and applications inside them. You've got things like MOTD, message of the day, a load of comp files for all different things. They're all provided in etc. That's also known as etsy or etc. Whatever you want to call it, I call it etc. Next one is home. This is the users directory, uh, very similar to Windows where you have the person's username and this is an area where they can store all their stuff. So you've got downloads, documents, blah, blah, blah. So that's a pretty good area to have if you have multi-user systems. Uh, this was also in user and uh, bin, I believe, but uh, it got moved out to home as a separate folder. Next one is lib. This contains system critical files and information on things like the kernel and the firmware as you can see here. So if unless you really know what you're doing I wouldn't recommend messing with these files but this is the lib area. Next one is lost and found. So say your system experiences an unexpected shutdown, turns itself off and you've got files that are there that are being written to. It's possible that they may end up appearing in Lost and Found. Also, if there's a hardware bug or you're getting corruption, uh, fragments will be stored in Lost and Found. It's also done by FSCK, which is the file system checker. That will dump information here too. So that is Lost and Found. Next one is media. So when you put in a USB flash drive or a thumb drive, whatever you want to call it, or a CD-ROM, uh, it needs to be mounted, which it should do automatically, and then provide you with a folder inside media. This allows you to access the contents of that flash drive or CD-ROM. They're all put inside here. And if they're not, they're put inside MNT, which is a specific mount folder. This also does things like internal uh, partitions on a hard drive, or if you have multiple hard drives, they're mounted here. Also, if you have access to remote file systems or network drives, all that stuff, is put inside MNT. Next one is opt. Now this is more for add-ons that aren't system critical. So for example, I have VBox guest editions. Uh, I'm actually running this inside a virtual machine under a program called VirtualBox and it has added its own uh, binaries inside the uh, operating system to help me uh, have specific graphic drivers and stuff like that. But it's not system critical. It was added in after, so therefore it's in the opt directory. Next one is PROC. Now this uses the processor or Proxys file system. Again, it's a virtual folder and this will tell you pretty much all, all that's happening on a system level in terms of processes. Um, again, these aren't really physical files, they're kind of displaying what's happening so you can uh, modify stuff. As you can see, you've got CPU info, disk stats, all that stuff. Processes that are in use by the system. Next one is root. If you don't know what a root user is, it's the top level user or administrator that can pretty much do system-wide tasks such as maintenance, help with corrupt things. This is essentially their home directory, so where stuff is stored that root users can perform to do uh, real in-depth stuff in terms of the hardware level on the system. This one is run. Now this was introduced a couple of years ago. Not all operating systems or Linux operating systems use it, but it's a place for applications to store their data uh, so it doesn't get wiped on restart. And I'll explain about that in f a few seconds, but it's an area where they can store it and it stays, it's a nice thing to have. 
Next one is sbin. This is very similar to bin in that you have all the commands that you can use, but these are all down uh, a little bit further, or sorry, they're up one in terms of they can control the hardware such as networking, uh, all that sort of stuff is inside here. So you've got stuff like ifconfig. I talked about fsck earlier, and uh, that's provided in here too. So that is sbin, or super user binaries. This is SE Linux, or uh, Security Enhanced Linux, which contains uh, security policies, and it's another virtual directory, so it's kind of showing you information, you can't really do a lot with the folder, so it's not on all distributions, uh, again like this video is not for all distributions, so um, SE Linux is for those who do actually have SE Linux installed. Okay, so SRV, or server, or services, some people call it, uh, inside here is the stuff that the, the computer or serv server provides so we have the web server we have an FTP server and all that data is installed and added in here that pretty much is that <laughs> the next one is sys again it's a virtual file system this time shows you about a hardware level so devices firmware kernel all that sort of stuff they're all included here so that's another virtual file system and it tells you stuff about the operating system TMP, as I said before about applications storing in the run directory, uh, just data, this is for stuff that isn't important and can be wiped. It's called a memory file system, so this can be flushed on reboot, it can be done by a script. Some operating systems do a script when the system starts up uh, to clear out the temp directory, but uh, this is what it says, temporary, it's a place to store temporary files. This one is user or user or Unix system resources. This is essentially where a bunch of stuff is kept on a user level, so user libraries, uh, more super user binaries. Uh, this, as I said, used to be the home directory where people would be in user bin, but it essentially covers uh, pretty much all that stuff like X, so GUI, uh, does KDE sometimes, it's got Perl in there too. So. Yeah, it's, it's a large array of stuff that can be stored in this directory. And then the last one is var. This is where things like server logs are stored. We've got mail in here. Uh, we've got print jobs. I've got more stuff to do with X in here too as well. And cache. So it's pretty much an area where folders and files change regularly. So you check them and uh, go through that way. So that pretty much covers all the folders that are on. It's just a very brief explanation. I'm sure some Linux gurus are gonna correct me for some of these with their own in-depth explanations, but it's the best way I can put it for a normal user. So thanks for watching this video. If you have any suggestions for the next video, please let me know in the comments. And uh, if you like this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up and I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.